Howdy folks and uh, welcome to another ESP32 technical tutorial. I think this one's going to be a good one. In this one we're going to be looking at developing ESP32 applications using the Eclipse framework. Now Eclipse is a development environment, an integrated development environment as they say, which is downloadable free of charge and provides an excellent Java development environment. But we don't want to develop in Java, we don't want to develop in C. And Eclipse also does an excellent job of C. Now I'm not going to teach you Eclipse in this story. Go and read about Eclipse and download Eclipse. So I'm going to assume we're going to start here with Eclipse already installed in your environment. I'm also going to assume that you know how to build an ESP32 application using the ESP IoT development framework and that you know how to build uh, ESP32 apps from the command line. So we're going to change our focus here on looking to see what it takes to integrate a build environment for ESP32 into the Eclipse story. So here's my recipe. So we pick a directory and uh, we're going to create a directory called Workspace and this is going to be the project repository for my Eclipse based projects. So pick your own directory, make a directory called Workspace. Enter that Workspace directory, it'll be empty and now what we want to do is we want to git clone the Espressif template application for the ESP IDF. Now, hopefully, as I say, my prerequisites for this are that you know these words and that you know what it means to clone in through Git uh, the ESP IDF template. Now, I've called uh, the target of this my app because that's what we want to build here. We want to build my app and we run the clone command and that is downloaded from GitHub a clone of the template of our base application. We run ls, we'll see we've got my app in there. The next step is go into my app and build ourselves a uh, what's the word I want to type and talk at the same time? Build ourselves a, con a, a configuration file which is the settings for our application. So we run make menu config. Nope. Uh, I thought it was menu config. Make. Me oh, I know what we failed to do. Uh, we've got to set up our environment such that we've got the ESP. IDF environment vi files in our shell. So I'm going to run my env.sh command here. Uh, oh dear, I'm making a hash of this. Set env.sh command. And if we now look, we have our e IDF path environment variable. So from here, go back into my directory, into my app run menu config and uh, we're now configuring our Espressif IoT development framework configuration. I'm not going to make any changes but you can change it as you need. Save it, exit and exit and we now have a new SDK config file. All right and that's the last thing we need to do from the command line. Now things get really really interesting. So uh, we've got ourselves a bare bones out of the box ESP32 template application. Now we launch Eclipse. So up comes Eclipse and uh, I'm going to specify my workspace folder that I just created so there was nothing in it a few minutes ago. Uh, then we created the ESP template application. I now launch Eclipse. I'm using the very latest Eclipse, Eclipse Neon. Well, latest at the time of uh, talking now. And up comes Eclipse. It whirs and it clicks for a few seconds and we now got our basic Eclipse environment. I'm going to make my screen a little wider like this. I'm going to close the welcome pane and this is Eclipse. 
Now the first thing to notice is that we are in a particular perspective in Eclipse. Uh, Eclipse can develop many different programming languages and we wish to switch over to the C and C++ development environment. So we switch uh, by clicking uh, up here, we switch over and we're now in the C, C++ development environment. Great. Now we're going to create ourselves a new C project. So I'm slowing down here. This is where things get interesting. We're going to create ourselves a new C project. It's going to be just a make file project. Nothing here, just an empty make file project. And the name of the project has to be the same name as the template app that you created with the git ESP IDF template download. It'll warn you that a directory of that name already exists in Workspace. We know that and what we want to do is merge or overlay a, a, a Eclipse project onto the existing project that was downloaded. We hit the finish button, we're in click, and lo and behold we have a visualization of the ESP32 ESP IDF template application in our Eclipse project. Now this is great. Now before we can compile this, because we're going to go all through all the way through compilation, we've got to tell our Eclipse environment about the ESPF environment or the, the ESP IDF environment. So we right click on our project here and down at the bottom there's an entry called properties. Select properties, go to our C, C++ build properties, click on it and check that the settings are here. Now we want to uncheck use default build command and change it to be a simple make here. We want to check that our build directory is as it should be here and this looks all perfect. The next thing we need to do is we need to add some environment variables. These are environment variables that are going to be present in the build environment for this tooling. Now this is what it looks like out of the box and we're going to add two new environment variables. The first one is we're going to add the environment variable IDF path and this is going to point to the value of our IDF path environment variable where the ESP um, uh, path is set. So if I echo my IDF path, uh, this is where my path is set. So I'm going to copy that, I'm going to paste it in here, remove the extra character at the end, and now my ESP IDF path is set. The last variable we want to set is the path environment variable. And <clears throat> excuse me, we want to augment the path environment variable with the extensa toolchain. This is the tooling that is the compiler for our ESP32 environment. And again, since my prerequisites are that you know how to compile from the uh, command line, uh, this shouldn't be too surprising to you. Here we're telling the Eclipse environment where to go find the binaries for the Eclipse environment, uh, for the ESP32 compilation. And there is just one last thing we have to do in the Eclipse environment, and that is tell <coughs> the environment where our include directories will be. So uh, we come over here, we go to our C, C++ general, paths and symbols, select C and add our directories. Now the directories we want to add are all local from IDF path and we then add components ESP32 include, I'm going to copy this into my clipboard OK. And what that does is that tells the Eclipse environment, go look in here for include files. Now we've got to repeat that a few times. So I'm going to repeat that for uh, the... Oop, I thought I'd copied that, but I guess I hadn't. Let me copy this again. Copy. OK. Add. 
paste, much better. And we want to repeat that uh, for a couple of directories. So let me just rattle through those and then we'll talk about which ones we're adding and then we'll talk about once you've done this once, how to make it incredibly simple the next time you ever may want to do this. So just adding, I've got three, four more to do. Uh, NVS flash and yes I have another monitor to my right where I've got a cheat sheet with all of these things that I want to tell you which uh, may sound like cheating but uh, trust me you don't, you don't want to be watching me fumble around for no great reason I fumble around enough for no great reason as it is so this and one more we want to add which this one becomes a workspace path and this becomes relative to our workspace and that's going to be my app build include and we're done now let me explain what we've got here so when we go to work with the source files of our C programs the Eclipse environment is going to validate that our source files are good quote unquote and that means it has to look inside the include directories and these are the include directories which may not be all of them there may be more you need but these are the include directories which I'm using so far which give us access to all of the defines in our programs so we've made our changes. Oh, and by the way, you can now export these settings, these environment for settings here. You click the export button, you can name a file, and then should you need to create a new project in the future, you can just import your old settings again and you'll be good to go. So we've, we've made these changes, we hit the OK button, and uh, we're now ready to compile. Now we have a make file in our environment but we haven't told the Eclipse environment yet what are the targets in that make file and a target is something you can actually make so we right click we come down here we go to build targets we say create and we say one of the targets we can create is something called all hit the OK button and now we have a build target I'm going to switch over to the console view here right click on this and here's where it all comes together build target and what's happening now is the Eclipse environment is running the compilation to build my application we're seeing the output of the build appearing on the console log of Eclipse here we can look for any errors and we watch it tick by and I'm talking here so that I can wait for it to complete it takes about 30 seconds to complete this is a virgin build there was nothing here previously and it's building and it's building and it's building usually you only have to build this one since it's building the ESP IDF from here on in all we'll do is change our components and we're done we now have our executable build. If I come here and refresh this project, we see in our build directory, here is our executable. And how cool was that? Now let's open up or let's open up our main source file. And the main source file we see here, this is our C code of the sample program. Now notice these errors here. These errors come because we have not yet rebuilt our index of the uh, include defect directories. When we added the include directory, it didn't know about. Uh, uh, when we added the include directory, we have to rebuild at least once the index so it knows to uh, what's contained in each of these header files. And notice here, I'm going to change these because uh, those naughty guys at Express, if we've used true and false, and uh, those aren't found, but if we change these to zero and one, we're good. And here we see my C application. Now notice the Eclipse editor does a nice job of syntax highlighting and all kinds of good things. Now let's make a change to my program. Let's put in here something like printf hello world and semicolon come over here I saved it with a control S and do another rebuild and now it just rebuilt the C program and we're done look how quick that was now let's make a mistake let's say integer I equals the string hello world well that's not going to compile you can't assign a string to a to an integer let's save this let's compile it and let's see what happens on an error 
Well, notice we got in our console log, we got our error. Yes, we expected that. Here's our error. Notice that in our source file, we've now been flagged as an error. I can hover over here. I can see the details of the error. That is so cool because it was taken from the compilation. And if I had lots and lots of errors in my source code, I can go through my console, find an error, and then double click on a line and that takes me to the corresponding error in the source file. How integrated and cool is that? Now if you've uh, completed your C programming and you're now ready to flash to your uh, ESP32, there's another build target we can create and we call this one flash and like this and now if we run the, well I'm going to build it first because we got uh, some uh, errors in there, build, and now if I was to flash this, it's flashing to the ESP32. Now we got an error there because my ESP32 is not in flash mode, but had it been in flash mode, this would have flashed it. Nice, nice. Um, and that's really all I want to say. Now there's some shortcuts. Uh, this up here will do a rebuild so click on this you don't have to come to your menu this will do a rebuild all and a shortcut key for rebuilding the last target is function key 9 so if I hit function key 9 that performs a rebuild as well of the last target so uh, remember which one you used last so in summary in summary you want to start by with the knowledge of how to build an ESP32 application from the command line. I'm going to leave that up to you to go study for yourself. Second, you need to download and install Eclipse. I'm not going to cover that. It's been covered many, many times in other videos and other, other stories, but you want to install the Eclipse environment. From there, the instructions here have illustrated what's necessary to build a workspace for building ESP32 applications. Now, although I've shown this in the Linux environment, the instructions should be just as applicable for the uh, Windows environment. So if you can build a ESP32 application on Microsoft Windows, Again, you should be able to download Eclipse and do the same things that we've shown here, except in a, in a Windows environment. And now, I never have to go near the command line. I can do all my editing. I can open multiple source files. I can do searches of code. And everything is rosy in the Eclipse garden. I hope you found some use in this video, and I look forward to making more in the future. Thanks, guys. Bye for now.